Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to graph a square root function. So a square root function is a function that contains a square root with the independent variable, and remember the independent variable is x, and that's going to be in the radicand or under the radical, under the square root. So just as we talked about with the linear functions and exponential and absolute value and quadratic, a radical function also has, or a square root function also has a parent function or like the most simple equation or the most simple function that we could graph, and then all other graphs of that parent function are transformations, okay? So our parent function here is f of x equals the square root of x. And now, before we talk about the domain and the range, let's think about this for a minute. If we have a number under a square root, can that number be negative? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But no, it cannot be negative, all right? So if x can't be negative, then we're gonna say that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And that is where our domain comes into play. So our domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. And we're gonna see what this looks like when we graph our parent function in just a minute. Also, we need to know that our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. So essentially our lowest point is gonna be zero and our point furthest to the left will also be zero. All right, so now let's take a look at some examples. So the first two examples we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about just the domain. So remember the domain, what's under the radical cannot be negative. So here we have f of x equals four times the square root of x plus seven. So what is under the radical? x plus seven, okay? So x plus seven has to be greater than or equal to zero. So now we can solve this by subtracting seven and our domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative seven. So if we remember back to some transformations we talked about, and we'll do a transformations video for radical functions a little later on, but this plus seven under the radical is going to push our graph seven units to the left, and so that's why our domain is x is greater than or equal to negative seven. Now let's look at example two. What is the domain of f of x equals five times the square root of x minus two? So once again, what's under the radical? Whatever it is, it cannot be negative. So right now, x minus two is under the radical, or it's the radicand and this has to be greater than or equal to zero. So now we can add two, and we find our domain is x is greater than or equal to two. So in this graph, our graph was transformed or translated two units to the right because that negative two, x minus two, is gonna push our graph to the right. All right, now let's graph a couple of these. So example three, graph the functions. So on both of these, we're gonna graph our parent function first. So our parent function is f of x equals the square root of x. All right, so since we're taking the square root, some good x values for us to use would be those that are perfect squares. So for example, for our parent function, if I plug in zero for x, the square root of zero is zero. If I plug in one for x, the square root of one is one. Well, two, square root of two, that's not a perfect square. Square root of three, not a perfect square. So let's plug in four for x. Square root of four is two. And we get four and two. Now, our next perfect square would be nine, right? So we plug in nine and we get the square root of nine is three. So nine, three, and then we can connect our points like this, and that would be what our parent function would look like. So let's change up our color here and let's graph our f of x equals square root of x plus six. So now, since this plus six is not happening under the radical, we can use these same x values that we used here because we're just gonna be taking the square root. We're not doing anything to x before we take the square root. All right, so let's use zero, one, four, and nine for our x values. So now when we plug in these values up here for x, we're going to take the square root and then whatever we get once we take the square root, we just add six to that value. So for the square root of zero, zero plus six is six. Square root of one is one, one plus six is seven. Square root of four is two, two plus six is eight. Square root of nine is three, three plus six is nine. Okay, so now we have our points here. So now we can graph them. So zero, six, okay? Actually, let's go back to red. All right, zero, six. And then we have one, seven. And then we have four, eight, four, eight. And then we have nine, nine. All right, so if you notice, our shape of our graph should be exactly the same, except for we just shifted vertically six units for all of those points. 
Okay, and that's what the graph would look like because there we had a vertical translation six units up from the parent function. All right, so now let's graph the parent function one more time. On the right side here, we're gonna graph g of x equals the square root of x minus three. So let's graph our parent function first, and that's using those same four coordinates that we did on example 3a. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3, okay? So now we connect those. Let's fix that a little bit. All right, and now let's go with pink. And now let's think about our x values here. Now inside the radical, we are subtracting three. So we wanna choose good x values that are going to give us a perfect square once we subtract three from it. So essentially we're trying to get to these numbers right here, zero, one, four, and nine, but we have to subtract three from a number to get zero, one, four, and nine. So for example, I wanna use my first x value of three, okay? Because when I plug in three right here, three minus three gives me the square root of zero and the square root of zero is zero, okay? Now I wanna plug in four, okay? Because now when I do the square root of four minus three, it gives me the square root of one, which is one, okay? And now we're trying to get to four. So now let's do seven for x, okay? So once we do that, that's gonna be the square root of four, which is equal to two, okay? And then lastly, we were trying to get to nine, so let's plug in 12 for x. So we plug in 12, and 12 minus three is nine, and the square root of nine is three, okay? So now we can graph these four points. So three, zero, four, one, seven, two, and 12, three, okay? So now, once again, we should have the same shape to our graph. All we did was we shifted or we translated this graph, the parent function, three units to the right. And that's how you graph square root functions.